Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're gonna do a little update on the Roadster pickup project. So I've been doing a ton of work getting the body kind of in place and get it sturdy, and we are going in the right direction. We also got the truck rolling, so we are getting close to the point where we can actually test fit or mount an engine in there um, to make it even closer to a movable, drivable vehicle, which is kind of crazy because it was, I don't know, a few months ago was in Texas sitting in a barn, forgotten about. So um, what we've done is we had this, this uh, McCullough engine, everybody's been asking, I mentioned in some of the lives. So we have this uh, old McCullough flathead engine. So this has an early, I think this is a 1939 McCullough uh, supercharger uh, kit that is on a 37, 1937 Ford flathead engine. We got this whole engine complete in North Carolina. So uh, Brian and his mom invited us over a handful of years ago and on our way to Moultrie we picked up a bunch of really neat flathead speed parts and old race stuff and et cetera, et cetera. I as always skimmed a couple things off the top for myself, this being one of them. And uh, Brian told us that this has been sitting um, longer than he's basically been alive. And he said he remembers us being a kid in, I don't know, the late 60s, early 70s or something. And uh, this engine being sitting there and his dad turning over by hand. So um, it hasn't run since at least the early 70s, I think. Um, so what I've done in the background is I've gotten this thing hopefully ready to try and fire it. So we put a new set of plugs in it. This takes the larger style plugs. The plugs were all broken just from sitting around the shop and you know things getting dropped or banged against it. So we put a fresh set of plugs in. Um, we used our test distributor that has these lovely slash ugly yellow plug wires, but this is a good test distributor we use on a lot of our earlier three bolt timing cover engines because it just slides in. We have the relocation kit with a new condenser so we can run you know, a modern coil. There's no questions here on if something's good or acting up. Um, we can just use all that and it works really good. So I've turned, I've cranked the engine over by hand. We already know it turned over um, by hand. Cranked it over with the starter to make sure the starter was good and um, we got spark. So we are kind of on the right track here to try and make this thing run. So we're gonna hook up a couple more things and uh, see if we can get this thing to fire off. Steve rebuilt a, uh, a Stromberg 97. A lot of guys you will see use multiple carburetors off of this. This is essentially, this is, I think, essentially a stock truck engine. So really multiple carburetors kind of overkill. We also want to keep it simple to fire it up and run it for the first time. So we have a good rebuilt Stromberg 97 ready to go, um, an old vintage one. And uh, we're gonna try and see what happens. So we'll see if we can get this thing to run. Then we're gonna do a little bit of uh, taking it apart and inspecting it and putting some new gaskets and stuff like that on it to uh, try and get it freshened up. So it's ready to put in the truck. set too low it was it didn't pull back against the screw uh, okay. and then I shoved it down and installed it okay just need to turn the screw up a little bit Some warming up still. Yep. All right. So okay. This can go away. All 
All right, so I got the hose clamps off here. This hose is kind of hard to get off, especially because it's been on for a million years, but I noticed as soon as I start prying a little bit, the head is loose, so. Um, I don't know why there's like, there was a stud here and a stud there. There's a couple on the other side that are like way too long, so at some point this engine might have been gone through and they put a few new studs in to put like really long ones in. So I gotta get this hose pried off, number one, so we can get the head snuck off here. Yes, I probably should pull the intake, but I'm impatient and I want to see what's under, what's going on with this head on this side. I thought this hose was going to come off. Wouldn't want to have to change this hose on the side of the road. Yeah. Freaking it. Mm. See what lurks underneath. Just, did just have it. Hmm. It was leaking somewhere in here. Yeah, it was right there. On yeah, it's just they got all the copper stuff. Oh, it's okay. a copper gasket with the the spray or whatever right. on it. But it was leaking what right? In yeah, right there. Yep. It was this cylinder. Oh, was it was definitely. It, yeah. Was it this one or this one? No, it was this one. It was on the front end. Got the one on the end. It was. Yeah, because it was definitely running fine, but it mm -hmm. was pushing it out the top of the head. So. Yep. That would, to me... Look how far the oil got down underneath the head. Hmm. This is interesting, like the gasket was not... Sealing. Maybe they torqued the head down wrong. Entirely possible, but yeah, that definitely looks like that wasn't sealing right. Hmm. Yeah, we shouldn't see a line of oil where it was running down into... The... No, yeah, that should stop right at the top. It's like brand new, well, not brand new, but you know, it's definitely replaced. Mm -hmm. Right. This thing's no. been, somebody's had this thing apart or messed not, with it at some point. Not an original piece. I think even the head gaskets had Ford on them. Hmm. Like stamped or whatever that says there, it would have been Ford. Felpro, I think yeah. it says, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see here. So that was up there. So it'd be right. That looks... Boogered up. Yeah, it is a little bit. It they, almost, didn't, they didn't clean the thing that, up before they put this That's what it head. is. They didn't clean it. Look Holy at the mess. Shit. Yeah, you're right. It's like not clean at all. No, they just slapped a, a head gasket on over the mess that was on there. Could be. Yeah, because it looks like you could see old gasket. Yeah, you can see the pattern in it. Yep. And, it's, no, and it's not... Because that's, that's like a multi-piece well, I don't know, but that, that almost looks like it's the stuff from a multi, right. like a, and not a copper gasket. You know what I mean? Because these yeah. copper gaskets are... I mean, look look how dirty this is. This That didn't pull off of here. Yeah, you're right. Well, that, that would be nice if somebody was just careless with their yeah. gasket replacement. Yeah, that would be, that would be a wonderful thing. Because everything else looks, like the head looks really nice. Yeah. I'm kind of impressed. Mm -hmm. And even the bores, I have to measure the bore, but I imagine it's stock, but... All right, so we got the head off and might have ever heard a saying. It uh, looks like at some point somebody, this engine's definitely been, we didn't pull the intake off just doing this 
suspect side, but it's got, uh, looks like a queen has pissed up Ford logo pistons, like factory replacement pistons that are 60 over. Um, and I measured the bore on a couple of these and it's coming out right at, you know, basically 60 over. So that all kind of jives. So it's just under three and an eighth bore at this point. Um, so it was originally three and a sixteenth. Um, so it's uh, right, right around, you know, like I said, a, a basically with my poor measuring abilities and capabilities here, looked like it was all correct. So definitely been going through. Um, what we're noticing, and we were talking about it in the video when we pulled the head, um, you could see the remnants of old gasket here. So there was probably like a fiber gasket on this before, and there is like tons and tons of fuzzy remnants of the old gasket on there and then we can actually see on this gasket where it was leaving you know pieces of that were behind and specifically where it was leaking compression right here there's a big chunk of old gasket that was just driven on there and they you know tried to tighten it down and obviously it was letting things uh, sneak by there so we definitely need to just basically give this thing a really good cleaning and hopefully slap a head gasket on it but I'm going to do my normal thing like we did on the engine that we put in the 39 Merc. We're going to get the compressed air. Before we put any water in this, we're going to get compressed air and knock out all the dust and rust chunks and all that stuff that might be in there that would be hiding and cause this thing to run hotter than it should. So that's a big thing that's helped with a lot of engines I've done lately. Even my uh, Go to City Coupe that I was driving around, I did that on that car after I swapped heads and the thing runs way cooler. So. Definitely uh, something we do on every engine now. So I'll get that worked on on this side, and we'll clean it all up, put that head back on, button it up, and then we'll uh, move over to the other side. All right, so we got the other head on and installed. We actually went ahead and started the engine just to make sure that everything was good and it fired up and ran. So I did something okay. Um, this side is fighting a little bit and I figured I'd stop and show you guys uh, on these heads. If they've ever been replaced sometimes, like I don't know what the person did that worked on this last, but there's like some of the studs they didn't cut off all the way 
and uh, they're quite long and they're also like some of them are bent so what happens is the head's loose like I can I got a little bit of wiggle but I can feel it's dragging and this head doesn't look like it's like overly corroded or anything sometimes electrolysis or whatever that happens around the dissimilar metals will cause these aluminum heads to get stuck on but I don't know if that's the case here I think what it is is some of these studs like that one is tight against the head on that side and it's loose over here. We have quite a few. I was just tapping on this one right here because I could feel it's dragging or hanging up as I'm trying to wiggle the head off. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Sometimes you have to tap around on these studs to get them off. And then I will also use, I have a piece of hardwood here that I've cut into like a wedge. I have a couple of these that I just use for sacrificial. So I use them to kind of hammer and get started like a little punch or chisel. And since they are uh, not as hard as metal, you won't damage the head taking it off using this. And then I use a rubber mallet and tap around a little bit with a with a uh, dead blow hammer or ball peen and lightly. But I got to keep working this. This one definitely, they got a couple studs that were tweaked and uh, it's fighting me a little bit. We got water in it, uh, fuel tank hooked up. We're leaking water all over the place because of our setup, but uh, it should tell us what it's gonna do. So, oh, did, that, did we tighten this down? Well, that's not really leaking, so. No, that isn't leaking much. That didn't leak in at all. What did you put that in my finger, right? No, I put a wrench on Oh, okay, it. yeah. Well, you, did, you, you tightened it enough then. It's definitely cooling in there. Oh yeah, that took a, it took a lot. 10 gallons? Darn near. Yeah, it's crazy how this everything's all dry because we had it all. Mm -hmm. so something's going on. You have to have the throttle, over. or we're flooding it. Mm -hmm. too soon. I'm like, oh, I don't even have the choke on. Yeah, yeah it's because we ran out of all that extra fuel we had mm -hmm. down there. There we go. Now we got some fuel going down yep. there.
fuel. Let's open the throttle a little bit. Yeah, try it out. So pretty successful. We got the uh, engine running. We got coolant running through everything. Our stand had some leaks, obviously, but uh, it actually ran good. We ran it for 10, 15 minutes with no fan, just sitting here idling and raising the RPMs a little bit. Oil pressure stayed at like 30, 35 pounds, and uh, and the press, you know, we finally shut it down at 10, 12, 15 minutes at 180 degrees, and it worked out. Uh, really, really nice. So we're gonna kind of like give it a stamp of approval that I think we're good to pull this off the stand and probably get it ready to throw into the Roadster pickup. So we have to change the clutch out and do a couple other things. That's why I'm anxious to get it off the stand because now that we know that it runs good, has good oil pressure, um, it didn't you know overheat instantly or do anything crazy. We're fairly confident we could pull it off the stand. We can get the clutch on. Uh, we could pull the oil pan, clean any kind of stuff that might be in the bottom of the oil pan out of there and uh, put a fresh seal on and all that stuff but the head gaskets all that seemed good now one thing we did notice was we were having problems with it, the uh the engine even once it was starting to get warm in the 130 to 140 degree range we were going to rev the engine it was starting to pop and carry on and act up on us not until it got to like 160 and, and up where we could actually start to rev it up and, and uh, give it some throttle. What we realized is we never hooked up the coolant hose that runs through the blower. So these early McCullough blowers, they actually have the, the coolant goes through the air charge through here and it's actually meant to heat up the air charge so that you have nice uh, warm air that matches the engine going down through. What we were finding there at the very end when we were starting to rev it, we were like put our hand on the blower and it was like, ice cold on the top of it and even down here where the charge was it was pretty cool so we had like ice cold air coming down through there and i think it was causing some problems so we're definitely going to hook that up because if you're driving in in the fall in the spring things like that when it's kind of cold like i think it's like high 30s low 40s here today outside that's what you know probably the problem we were having so until the engine was like 100 percent warmed up you really wouldn't be able to drive it because it would start acting up and backfiring and and acting like it had a lean condition so um yeah so everything's pretty good we're, we're psyched so we'll pull this off the stand do a little bit of fiddling once we have it on the car on the truck and like driving then we can start playing with maybe playing with some of the jetting we have a feeling we have the stock 45 jets in here for the uh, Stromberg 97. We may bump up to a set of 48 jets um, just to give it a little bit more fuel and uh, we'll kind of see what happens from there. But we don't really know until we get in the truck and start driving it as with all this stuff. But this run stand really uh, makes it very, very nice. So thank you guys for following along. Let me know what you think of the new power plant for the Roadster pickup project. This is gonna be super cool. Can't wait. Thanks guys. Catch you later.